Hi everybody! I wanted to do another vintage pattern video, which generally doesn't involve my face, <laughs> but I was editing it just now and I realized I should pop in quickly with a few little words to introduce what I've done. So with having an Etsy shop that sells vintage patterns, I've looked at a ton of different patterns from different companies over many different eras, and I really like seeing how the envelope design changes throughout the years. I've also found some tips and tricks on how to uh, more accurately date them, uh, because where they put the copyright date changes throughout the years and the different decades. So I decided to film a video going through the history of one pattern company with examples from either my personal collection, stuff that's uh, currently for sale in my Etsy shop, or uh, to fill in some larger gaps, pattern pictures that I've found online. So I decided to start with Simplicity, which started producing patterns in 1927. So this year is their 95th year. Uh, I guess look out for a big party in five years, probably. Who knows? So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, or please leave a comment. Uh, it was a lot of work, but a lot of fun to put together. I've already got plans on how to improve for the next company that I try and do. And so here you go, the history of Simplicity told by their pattern envelopes. So this is our first Simplicity pattern. This is one of the earliest ones I was able to find. This is Simplicity 96. It's got Simplicity all in one pattern up at the top in the big black rectangle. All the pattern numbers I found after this were four digits, but this one's only 96, two digits. This one's listed on the Vintage Pattern Wiki as being from the 1920s, but it doesn't get any more specific than that. This isn't a pattern I actually have in my hand, so I can't investigate using the instructions or looking under any of the envelope flaps or anything. The interesting thing about this one is that it's a little wrap dress called a hooverette, which I did a bit of research into to see if I could try and use that to help me figure out what exact date this pattern was from. Herbert Hoover was president of the United States from 1929 till 1933. His name ended up on a lot of things um, related to the Great Depression. Although for wrap or apron dresses, the type of dress that you would clean your house in, Hoover was also a leader of the Food Administration. And there's a really interesting blog post on Witness to Fashion that I'll link to in the comments. So Hoover was leader of the Food Administration in 1917 and 18. And the blog post goes into some interesting details about the Hoover Helper's uniform, which is not exactly this dress, but I think the Hooverette term might have originated before he was president. I think it might have had something to do with this Food Administration position. But then again, Simplicity only started in 1927, so there isn't much time in the 20s for Simplicity, just those three years. Here is our next Simplicity pattern. This one is also listed in the Vintage Pattern Wiki as being from the 1920s. And as I said at the beginning, Simplicity started in 1927, so there's only a few years in there <laughs> between 27 and 29, flipping over into 30. This one has a different layout than the first one we looked at. It's got a Simplicity pattern Simplicity cutout pattern actually in the middle of the envelope rather than the top. It makes a big deal about uh, having step-by-step -step illustrated instructions and an easy guide to home sewing. It's got a little blurb. Again, this is all the front of the envelope and the little blurb says three distinctly different styles can actually be made from this one pattern. An exclusive feature of Simplicity hand cut patterns. Which makes me wonder if other sewing patterns at the time didn't have things like collar variations because the main variations here seem to be the collars and the belts or the the ties. This is similar to the last pattern in that we're still in sort of black and white or grayscale. We haven't moved to color yet but a pretty different layout from the first pattern we looked at. Our next pattern is Simplicity Pattern 1523. This one is from 1934. And I feel like this is a lot more what we're used to looking for uh, with a sewing pattern, is the color illustration. This one has a little sketch of the back of the dress. It's a cute little dress with a sailor's collar. 
actually quite similar in shape to the previous one we looked at that was 1920s. Uh, again, sort of very long and lean, uh, coming down to sort of mid, mid to lower calf. And now the Simplicity logo has switched to be written um, vertically instead of horizontally on the left side of the envelope. Price is still 15 cents. The last couple were 15 cents as well. Again, this example is 1934. You might see that little logo on the lower right. Uh, it says made in the USA and then below that it says NRA. They're not talking about the uh, Rifle Association in the United States. They're talking about the United States uh, National Recovery Administration, which was an agency established in 1933 uh, by Franklin D. Roosevelt. And it was dissolved in 1935. So this really gives us the tiniest window in which this pattern could have been made. And as I said before, it's from 1934, which fits perfectly in those dates. I feel like these two ladies, like the lady on the left is sort of going for sailor. I feel like the other lady is maybe going for, I don't know, it's like cowboy vibes. I think maybe the, the stars are making me think of sheriff. But then the little lacing up of the front makes me think Friar Tuck. That might be the, the color as well. But anyway, lovely 1934 simplicity pattern. This is the first time we see a simplicity pattern being written uh, vertically on the left of the envelope. Okay, now we are at 1939. This is simplicity pattern 2980. We have the same vertical simplicity pattern, same font that we had on the last one. We have a new city added. The previous 1934 pattern just said London, Paris, New York. Now we have London, Paris, Toronto, New York. Two still what I would think of as very 30s ladies. They're very long. Like if you actually think, you look at where the waist is and how long their legs must be. They're very sort of stretched out. They're very, it's a very stretched out sort of fashion illustration style. This one I found a sold listing on Etsy and I will link to the seller in the description below, but I actually got a back of an envelope for this one, which is fun or because it has the little blurb. And that's one of my favorite things about these patterns. I mean, first is the illustrations. Second is looking at how the dresses of the era were described. So this one is Mrs. Dress. For your more important social activities, choose either of these frocks. Style one bodice buttons at front. Its heart-shaped neckline is achieved by ribbon loops, which hold each side. Set and sleeves are short. Style two bodice is tucked at front to fit the waist. Neck is high, finished with a collar and caught at front with an ornament. Sleeves are long. Both styles have full in front skirts joining bodice at waistline. And yeah, those tucks on the red or maroon dress just lovely. I don't see the year printed on the back of this envelope or the front, so I imagine it is probably on the instructions if you have a copy of this pattern that still has the instructions. And these pattern pieces are still the unprinted pattern pieces with just perforations to show you important points like darts or buttons. And I imagine all those tucks on the front of the dress as well. So now we move on to 1943. This is a girl's slip and undies pattern. It's got cute little scalped or lace trim on the bottom of the shorts and the top of the slip. It's still the same simple um, font for their logo. See, this one has some more cities on it. The last one said London, Paris, New York, and now we're London, Sydney, made in Canada, Toronto, New York. <laughs> No more Paris, I guess. And then let's look at the back of this one. It's got the little blurb about what it is, shapes of the pieces, how many pieces, little line drawing, and the size. But yeah, so this one is 1943, so sort of mid-40s-ish, early to mid-40s. And this is when the price moved, the price rose. <laughs> Uh, but still the same sort of drawing style and font. I found the date for this one on the instructions on the inside. 
<laughs> this envelope is very old. So there's the drawing. It's the line drawing of the drawing from the front. So here, as you can see, these instructions are a little sad. But then down here is where you find the date. This is the uh, back page of the instructions, so this is the last page, and there you can see it says copyright 1943, Simplicity Pattern Call. Let's fold these sad little instructions back up. And as you can see here, the pattern pieces still aren't printed. Everything's just marked with perforations. Okay, so from 1943 we go to 1946 which is only a three-year difference, but you can see that they had some serious design changes. The simplicity pattern font is now um, sort of cursive. Price has gone up five more cents. Th that last pattern was 20, this one's 25. And then this little thing down here says, uh, simplicity patterns are featured in Chatelaine magazine. I think this is a really cute dress. This is one of the ones, this one's, this one and the last one actually are in my Etsy shop. It's not an apron, it's just a trim on the skirt. And it's not even on a seam. And I think it just gets applied. So yeah, so actually let's get the second one or the first one back in here. That's quite the difference. It looks like these ladies are wearing matching bracelets. But she has gloves and she doesn't. This little peplum thing really makes it look like she's wearing, they're wearing matching aprons, but they're not. But yeah, so if you're looking to try and figure out what sort of date your simplicity pattern is from, this cursive, I think, signifies a change that happened mid-40s, because 1943 we had this font, 1946 we have this font. And again, I found, I found that date on the second page of the instructions. Copyright 1946. Okay, so now we leave the 40. This one is from 1952. As you can see, they're still using the same, same or similar uh, cursive font. Oh. Price has risen again. Price rose 10 cents in those uh, six years. The patterns are still, just like the previous pattern, uh, featured in Chatelaine magazine. This, this print is new. It says details printed on each pattern piece. So sometime between our last pattern, 1946, and this pattern, 1942, Simplicity started printing the pattern pieces which is what we know and love today, is having lines, lines and instructions printed on the actual pattern pieces. This is another one that's in my Etsy shop. This is a, a very sad pattern, but I just, I love the dress, which is why I wanted to use this one as an example. Oh, my fingernails almost match the gingham on this lady's dress. So there you can see how these bits fit together. And again, the back has the little line drawing, the line drawings of all the pieces, a little blurb about what the pattern is. And on the instructions, once again, on, it always seems to be on the back page of the instructions at the end. Copyright 1952 by Simplicity Pattern Co. Jacket view two, make same as jacket one. Thanks, instructions. That's helpful. <laughs> but yeah, so this is a big way to uh, date the patterns is knowing that the printing, having the printed instructions and lines and stuff on the tissue instead of perforations happens sometime uh, sort of late 40s, early 50s. And I just love, I love a full skirt. A small waist in a full skirt is one of my favorite styles of dress. Now we're in the 60s. So this is 1962 and is very different than the last uh, physical one I showed. 
So they've gone with a different font here. It's uh, a serif font. It's not the cursive anymore, although it is in italics. They're still specifying that's a printed pattern. Wow. 10 years. We went from 35 cents to 60 cents. And on this one, Simplicity has also put a little border around uh, their name and the price. I still think the illustration style is pretty similar. There hasn't been a huge artistic change there. Uh, they're also putting a box around the number at the top. Again, the back is very similar with uh, the back line drawings, shapes of the pieces, a little blurb about the pattern. This one is interesting because from the early, sometime in the early 50s to the mid 60s, they stopped putting the copyright date anywhere on the pattern. Like it's not on the flap, it's not anywhere back here, it's not on the instructions. So I looked this one up online, there's a few websites that I'll link in the description that um, help you date patterns, although some of them are um, sort of put together crowdsourced like Wikipedia is so you have to trust that the person who last edited it was right um, that's the pattern wiki and then there's also another one called uh, Copa which I will link in the description of the video you will have to request access but I did it helps for dating patterns but again it also depends on if they have say this particular pattern in their collection Okay, now we're a little more into the 60s. This is 1966. This was 62, still in that sort of, using that 50s full skirted silhouette. Now we're more into the sort of 60s sheath. Long, short, or no sleeves. She's going somewhere fancy, she's got gloves. So you can see that on this one, they had this little pink border just around the name. This one, they've gone with the thin pink border around the whole envelope. And same font, but they've used that sort of magenta -y pink uh, for their, for the business name, for simplicity. And I think, I'm losing track now of how many I've looked at, I think this is the first one where it's across the top and not, say, down the sides. So this stamp here is put on by the uh, the fabric store, the pattern store. Price has gone up five cents. Oh, now? I mean, I suppose this depends where these patterns were meant to be sold, but this is the first one I think that had the Canadian price separate. And the back really doesn't change very much. Um, again, back line drawings, little blurb, shape of all the pieces. This one, I know this one's 1966 because now it's right there. Copyright 1966, Simplicity Pattern Co. 200 Madison Ave, New York, New York. So that makes it even easier to see uh, when your pattern is from. You don't even have to pull out the instructions, or if the instructions are missing, you can still figure out what year uh, this particular pattern is from. Okay, from the 60s to the 70s. So this one is 1973. So not all 70s patterns were in this sort of landscape format for the drawing, but this one had lots of options. So this is 1973. You can see they've changed their uh, logo font again. We've gone sans serif and not italics anymore. So that's quite the change from that guy. Price has gone up. That 1966 pattern was 65 cents. Now we're at a dollar in 1973. Again, these stamps, well, you can tell where it was sold. These stamps are put on by the fabric shop. Wow, fabric land. That's still where I shop. Not at that address. But yeah, I thought this was a fun example of the 70s pattern. It's got this, it's a cardigan, hip huggers, and I think they call it a bra top. I don't think it's a bikini top. Unlined cardigan, bra, and hip hugger pants. They basically recommend every type of fabric on this one, I think because I assume the cardigan is for the knit and the jersey. I don't know which fabric they expect you to make the bra out of. Probably not denim or wool, but who knows. And here they've added some color to the back um, where they show you the schematics of the pattern pieces. They're in their own little sort of colored block. 
And the reason I know this one is from 1973 is in super tiny print right down there above my thumb in my gorgeous manicure. <laughs> Uh, it says copyright 1973 Simplicity Pattern Co. But yeah, so I thought that was a fun example of the 70s and a lot of the patterns I have from this era have this uh, color block at the top. It comes in different colors. I haven't quite figured out if the color means something, like if the yellow ones are different from the green. Um, that will take that would take a lot more thinking and buying of patterns so who knows it might happen we're getting into slightly more recent memory here this one is from 1978 so the last one was 73 now we're at 78 this one has sort of the portrait orientation instead of that landscape because there's i think less options in this one and this is the first time i mean there's a lot of firsts on here but this is the first time we're seeing photographs instead of line drawings there's also a change in this border around here. It's sort of reminiscent of the color block on this one, but this was just at the top and this goes all the way around. It's a similar font, again, sort of blocky sans serif. They've gone really blocky with the pattern number. Price has doubled in the five years between 73 and 78. What were sewers thinking then? Here we are in the back. They've still got a little bit of what seemed to be their sort of signature magenta y pink. Again, we've got the block with uh, the schematics of the pattern shapes, the back line drawings, little blah 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 about what the pattern is like. Designer fashion. Jacket with shawl type collars, front button closing, long set in sleeves and flaps. I don't know. I think, I think it's cute and weirdly enough, like for a pattern from 1978. I don't think she'd be too out of place seeing her downtown. And, th and then of course there's the skirt version too, if you prefer skirt to pants. But yeah, so again, that's a pretty significant change from the last one that happened sometime between 1973 and 78. And now we are into the 1980s. This is a 1981 pattern. Simplicity 9957, and it's for a whole host of things. You've got pants, shorts, collared shirt, and a bikini. And in on the front cover, they're all made in the same gingham. So this one is a bit of a break from some of the ones we've been looking at, because this is the first time Simplicity's done this angle thing with the Simplicity name uh, on the left hand, l upper left corner there. Uh, this one's a designer pattern, so they actually credit the fashion designer, John Weitz. And so they've used a photo of a model and also drawings, which I think is a neat combination. I do really love the fashion drawings on sewing patterns like this. I think they're so cute and it's such... And it's very nostalgic, I think, because I've flipped through so many 50s and 60s patterns that I like to still see them being used a little later as well. So this envelope has two sizes in it, uh, size 6 and 8. Not all the patterns uh, we've been looking at have had that. Um, most patterns were just, you just bought the one size, and hopefully you don't change sizes, or <laughs> you picked the right one. Although nowadays it's multiple sizes in one envelope, so here we see that starting for simplicity. And again they've got sort of the color block color coding, this time in an orange around the outside and a little bit on that angle. And yeah, so this is early 80s, 1981. I also managed to find a picture of the back for this one. looks very similar to many of the other uh, patterns we've looked at. I find the backs really don't change, don't seem to change as much as the fronts. It's still got all that information there. A little blurb about the pattern, line drawing, sizes. Okay, now we're a little bit later in the 80s. This is 1987. Simplicity 7959. Now we are officially at the point where I am older than the patterns. <laughs> this one's interesting. They've done away with the color blocking. They've turned the Simplicity name into, a, into an outline block letter rather than the filled in block letter. And this looks to be a a cute pattern for surf club clothes, so 
This pattern is just for the pants, and the little blurb on the back says, Mrs. Men's and Teen Boys, easy to sew, loose fitting, pull on baggies in four lengths. All views of front pleated to waistband, double back elastic casings, and yoke and pockets. Version 3 has cuffs. Oh, I see. Version 3 is the uh, pink stripe on the lady in, blonde lady in the pink shirt. But yeah, for all for all the fact that these outfits are super bright and those are some crazy shorts and then crazy also crazy plaid pants the envelope itself i feel has gone pretty minimal it's gotten rid of all the color blocking they've been doing it's just simple everything's black and white except the illustrations and actually the price has moved off the front here we have the barcode now but no dollar value Okay, now we're in much more recent memory. You may have seen this one in the fabric store with your mom. Or I might be, just be talking about me. <laughs> this one's from 1995. We've got a barcode. We've got... They seem to have stuck with the blocky sans serif font. This one I think is a special one because of the design of your own thing. There's various different options that you can put together for your own little... Amish country dress. So we've got the back, the line drawings of the back, but no longer do we have the schematics of the pattern pieces. And here we have the instructions in English and French, which is good for Canada. Here is where the date is on these 90s patterns. So this one's 1995. They've stuck with their sort of, again, the signature pink. For that little border there, but it is much less pink than some of the other ones have been. So, and this one also has multiple sizes in the same envelope, which was a more recent thing because all those leading up into the 70s and the early 80s, one size per envelope. Now you've got sizes 7 through 14. Okay, this one I pulled because it's from Simplicity's 75th anniversary. And so Simplicity started in 1927, so the 75th anniversary was 2002. So you can see that this one is similar to the last one in the little uh, upper left-hand corner there, where they've got the number, the size, the barcode, and then instead of Simplicity in the bl big black block letters, it's got this special edition vintage closet thing, uh, 1900 to 1910. Which is a little funny considering that Simplicity didn't start until 1927, so... But they decided to do some vintage stuff for their 75th anniversary. Good job. <laughs> but yeah, I pulled this one just more because I thought it was fun to have the uh, anniversary one. To see the anniversary envelope. Okay, now we're getting even more recent. This one's from 2010. We've gone back to a little bit of the color blocking, and this particular one uses that Simplicity magenta that we've seen used so much. Do you remember the absolute obsession we all had with these Amy Butler type fabrics? Especially the, the blonde lady on the right. That might not be an actual Amy Butler fabric, but it looks a lot like it. And how everything... It was all just crazy quilting cotton, quilting cotton patterns that was sort of, I don't know, like the next evolution of Lisa Frank. So now we are in 2012, not that long ago. So we've still got blocky sans serif simplicity letters, the numbers are thinner than some have been, some got quite blocky. This one, this one's in my personal collection. Everything else that I've shown you physically that I have here in my green talent hands has, is either in my Etsy shop or will be in the Etsy shop. This I bought for me. <laughs> and so this is Leanne Marshall pattern. I don't know if you've watched as much Project Runway as I have, but I started watching it back, back in that very first season that would have been like 2005. Yeah, I remember where I was. I remember the roommate I was with was, a, was working on costumes. So we would religiously watch it every week. Anyway, Leanne Marshall was on Project Runway season five in 2008. And then in this 2012 pattern, she did a whole line for Simplicity. And this is from 2012. So we've got photos, we've got pencil drawing, 
just sort of neat to go back to that pencil drawing aesthetic, like some of the sort of 40s, 50s, 60s patterns. This envelope is shiny. Actually, there you can see the like the other ones have been matte paper. This one is gloss or semi-gloss or something. So on this one, the date, the more recent ones, is on the back. So there's a lot of teeny tiny text that the camera probably can't see, but it does say 2012 right there. I've never used this one. I want to. I still think the dress is really cute. It's got these sort of raglan sleeves and then on this version you can leave the sleeves off and just have that sort of cut in sort of halter like neckline. And again the back has the back view. Well, I got spoiled by the matte envelopes. <laughs> I have to make sure I angle this just right. This one actually doesn't give a blurb about this is a sweet little dress with raglan sleeves and an optional halter neck blah blah. It just gives you list of fabrics, notions, sizes, and I really still hope to make it one day, even though I must have bought it a while ago. So here we have a 2016. Again, this is from my personal collection. I felt one winter I thought I wanted to make a cape. I have not yet made myself a cape. It's pretty similar. I only I pulled this one just because this was sort of a special one, because it's a special designer one. Even though they're they're about five years apart, they are very similar. And I just wanted to give you an idea of what a regular non-designer pattern one from this sort of era of pattern envelopes looks like. These are pencil drawings, uh, not photographs. This is a photograph. Oh, did the Leanne one have all the socials? It didn't. So this 2012 Leanne Marshall pattern did not have all of Simplicity's social media. So we've got your Facebook, we've got your YouTube. Oh, I should see if they have any, what they're doing now. Instagram, Pinterest, aww. and Twitter, <laughs> an email and a phone number. So they're, they covered all their bases. I find it funny that they don't seem to be able to get Simplicity on Pinterest because their username there is Simplicity Pins. And Twitter is Tweet Simplicity. I wonder if they fixed that since then. And so this is the last physical one I have to show you. I pulled this one again from my personal collection just for fun because it has the 90th anniversary. So as we know, Simplicity started in 1927. So this is from 2017 and it's a vintage reproduction. So they took a 1930s pattern of theirs and then updated it. So here's the, the pattern art of the original one. We can see, see we're learning things here about what the what font they used and how things were laid out. But I don't think they left the price on because this would have been like 15 cents and then this was probably $15. Simplicity, cute little 90th anniversary thing and some thread or ribbon at the top. I just thought this would be a fun way to close out or almost close out, be the penultimate pattern of the video. They've made a little more space back here. There's some more sort of negative white space. We've still got all the socials. Okay, and then just for reference, as we are now in the year 2022, I decided to see if I could pull something off the new releases section of Simplicity's website. So I grabbed this skirt pattern, a skirt in a few lengths. Uh, two are yoked, two are not. I think it's uh, invisible zip. And so this is their web graphic. I assume the envelope is pretty darn similar to this. Maybe the envelope would have a barcode where this uh, web graphic wouldn't. Uh, but yeah, again, still big block letters, pattern number in the upper left there. This one's an easy to sew pattern, so that's marked on there as well. And again, here they've used a photograph of a model wearing the skirt and then the drawings of the different uh, versions of the skirt, the pleated or the gathered with the yoke and all that. And then the back, or at least the back that they release on the website, it's pretty simple, not too much to these line drawings. At some point, I think they stopped doing the thing where they show you the shapes of all the pieces of fabric on the back, like giving you that little schematic of how many pieces there are and what their gen general shape is. And also there's no little blurb about 
lovely spring skirts come in two different lengths, and some are pleated, some are not. I'm a little sad they got rid of that. I always liked seeing how they described things. But there's something interesting I noticed about these last three patterns that I want to get into. Oh, interesting. So this is just in English. This is English and French. And this is English and French on the back. So because I live in Canada, everything needs to have English and French on it. Like as a kid in Canada, I feel like that's how you learn all the French words for food. Because every can, every cereal box, has the English and the French, so you know the French word for peanut butter, for cereal, for mini wains. <laughs> and so I can't buy simplicity patterns here in Canada. I guess I haven't looked at a fabric store in a while, because I haven't been to an actual fabric store in a while, but I remember, and I've looked this up as well, in about 2013, Fabricland, which is one of the main chain fabric stores here in Canada, Fabricland or Fabricville in Quebec, they stopped carrying simplicity patterns. And I asked someone once, uh, well, because I think, I think I was looking for the Leanne Marshall patterns at my local at the time, Fabricland, and I asked the woman there, oh, you don't have any of the simplicity patterns. Are they coming back? What's happening? And she said they're not carrying them anymore. And she told me it was because the instructions had to be in French, which makes sense to me, and Simplicity wouldn't print them in French. But here we have envelopes in French. Let's see what the instructions say. Oh, that's pattern. That's instruction. See, this booklet seems to be... Oh, that's in Spanish. It's in Spanish. Oh, maybe that was the problem. So the envelope, envelope is in French. Instructions in Spanish, which makes sense, which makes more sense for an American market to have English and Spanish on the instructions. Why is the envelope in French? But anyway, so I looked into Fabricland, um, not carrying simplicity patterns anymore. A lot of other, pe a few other people online. Uh, got the line about, oh, well, they're not in French, so we can't sell them. And then some other people said, well, due to pricing structure, it's no longer useful to carry them because the pattern, the price was going to have to go up really high. Like there were price hikes, um, something to do with import fees and something like that. So Fabricland just gave up on selling simplicity patterns. So it's hard to tell what the real what the real deal is because again this is French Jean Femme Capes et Capelet <laughs> But then what are what language are these instructions in? English and Spanish. So I wonder if it's to do with pricing or to do with the fact that they weren't going to reprint this booklet in French. I know I bought these three patterns one of the last times I was in the States. I drove down to upstate New York for the Rhinebeck Sheep and Wool Festival, and I made sure on my drive down from Toronto that I stopped at a Joann's. I think I stopped at multiple Joann's because I knew I wanted this one. There's another vintage petticoat one from the same 90th anniversary thing, and I wanted as many Leanne Marshalls as I could find. But of course, that was that was 2017 and this came out in 2012, so I think I was lucky I still found this guy. But yeah, so you can't buy simplicity patterns in brick and mortar stores in Canada anymore, or at least not fabric lands. And I haven't seen them carried in other fabric stores, because I think most of the other fabric stores I visit are more focused on indie designs and stuff like that, so they wouldn't be carrying something big like this. If you're in Canada and you've seen simplicity in a store recently, let me know. Or do you know? which is the real line, like which is real, or maybe it's both. Is it the French thing or is it a pricing thing? Because I know at Joanne Fabrics, when I've been there in the States, the patterns are so cheap and sometimes you can get them for sale for like $2. But here in Canada, it's like 15, 19. It says a maple leaf on it. 
This is a mystery that I thought I had figured out, but I haven't. I wonder if they just printed special envelopes with French on it and then stuck the Spanish English instructions in there and hoped the Canada Border Services wouldn't notice. I don't know. It's a mystery. I just have to buy them when I'm in the States.